Hey YouTube, just wanted to give you an update. I said that I would uh, go ahead and break down my tank and give you, a, you know, an idea of the things that I did with and why I did them. Just a quick review before we get into that. I'm going to do two videos. The first one is going to be the tank and the second one will be the uh, custom refugium which is under the tank. Um, I just had got some new corals that I showed some drip acclimation videos and uh, wanted to run through those real quick. Um, having a little bit of a diatome breakout right now, but uh, as for the corals, um, the I got some new polyps over here. Sorry about the quality. Um, my I'm using my phone, easiest to upload. Uh, some some little polyps. Uh, I had either a hammer or a torch curl, if you can see right there, um, but I had bought it real cheap because it looked like it was dying out, see if I could save it, and that was not the case. So uh, yeah, a couple little, uh, little polyps right there, um, the mushroom down there in the back, I'm, I'm a big fan of mushrooms, they're easy and they look really cool. I got these two mushrooms um, right there. Big mushroom laying down there. A pretty cool zoa colony with the orange and the green right there. Another big mushroom. Um, and a piece of ice, some kind of SPS um, Monipora bird's nest, but it's browned out. I got it at a discount price, just seeing if I could uh, bring it back. And uh, more got it for the cool uh, polyps that were on the bottom of it as well as a plate up there at the top uh, nothing's come out yet I think it's still kind of getting used to my tank my, the lights aren't as strong on my tank as they were in the uh, in the store and my royal grandma my ocelaris um, and then a couple of mushrooms in the back uh, if you notice from before I had a I had a Candelactus anemone that was hanging out right there for the last three months and then decided to go right by my power head over here. And luckily I caught it right as it moved and uh, hopefully he'll survive. Just turned off the power head for a little while. Um, as for my tank, I just have in the tank, I have my, uh, my, my power head and the standard pump. I get pretty good flow because um, for instead of my, if we go around the back, here's the back. Instead of using a standard overflow box, I plumbed, let's open this, um, I plumbed an old power filter because my, my whole idea with this was going cheap but still get great water quality and uh, my water quality right now is pretty much everything's at zero. Uh, I'm actually going to start supplementing uh, with uh, marine snow for my corals just because my water is pretty much sterile. Um, I'm using Chemipure right there in the, in the filter and then what it does is it sucks from chamber 2 into the power filter and just drops down into my refugium and uh, sump and this right here is the return line. Uh, I've had a couple questions. Everybody asked me what's going on with this Chemipure right here, the Chemipure Elite. Um, I was having a little bit of an outbreak of algae and I figured I hadn't had a test kit for my phosphates, but I uh, figured my phosphates were running kind of high. So, And every time I try to use like this, this is the only place that I can use in my whole system where if I put something in there that doesn't back up the flow too much. So uh, instead of trying to use the Chemipure where I got good flow through it, I decided to just kind of do a DIY thing. And I got a small little power head right down in here. And it draws through a, just a piece of vinyl tubing into the bottom of the Chemipure uh, bottle and then comes out right there. So I know I'm getting forced. It's kind of like my own GFO carbon media reactor just really cheap and easy and it's kind of doing essentially the same thing it's forcing my water through the uh, 
through the carbon and the GFO and the Kemi Pure Elite. Um, so my, oh, my lights are the same, the, the standard 29 gallon BioCube 36 watt, uh, 10 K or 12 K and the, uh, actinic, I got a 36 watt of each. I'm thinking about getting some stunner strips, um, and mounting them in there because they're both waterproof. It has a cover over it, but I can just drill a hole and mount some stunner strips in there. Maybe have some of my, you know, corals requiring more light uh, that I can put in there that, you know, they might be a little more happy. Uh, and uh, what else we got going? Oh, yeah. Uh, in chamber three, between chamber two and three, I have a, uh, I'm using a poly filter. Uh, let's see if I have it. Just, just one of these, one of these deals. Um, I'm changing it out, just trying to get anything, trying to keep my water as clean as possible. And, uh, cause in a small tank, you gotta worry about your water clarity and your water, uh, parameters. Um, and I do have bio balls and r rubble, a little bit of live rock rubble in the bottom of chamber two, just kind of for added filtration. I have been having mixed reviews about the bio balls and uh, maybe get some of your input and uh, what you think. Another thing I like about the power filter as a overflow is if power shuts off, everything shuts off with the sump. Um, and we don't have any accidental overflows or anything like that. Uh, so next video will be my sump and then the entire system together. So thanks for watching.